I'm Dr. Gail Anderson from Simon Fraser University and School of Criminology, and I'm a forensic entomologist. So most of my work, most of my homicide investigations are on land, in terrestrial investigations, where I look at the insects colonizing a dead body and then give the police some idea of when that person may have died, whether the body's been moved or disturbed, things like that. But although we have a lot of data in the terrestrial environment, we didn't have anything in a marine environment, in aquatic environments, obviously because it's very difficult to, to do research in a marine situation. So I started doing marine experiments, oh gosh, a long time ago, back in 1999 and 2000, back in the House Sound area, where I was using uh, pig carcasses, as we use today, and I had divers from the RCMP dive team and uh, Canadian amphibious search team, the Canadian Coast Guard, and the Vancouver Aquarium who would dive down and videotape what was happening to my pigs. But obviously that wasn't really um, very um, efficient because we could only get any kind of data when we had divers available. So gosh, it must be now about 2006 now, I think, that Dr. Verena Tunnicliffe, who was the project director of uh, Venus at the time, she approached me when I was talking about my work underwater at, in the House Sound area and she said, you know, I'm putting a camera at the bottom of the ocean. Would you like to put a pig under it? And I said, I'd love to. And so that was a long time ago now, um, many, many dives back. And we put our first pig down here in the Saanich Inlet in 2006. And we followed it up with another one in 2007 and another in 2008. So I had three years worth of experiments to look at what was happening to the bodies in the Saanich Inlet. I then moved into the Strait of Georgia with uh, some carcasses with my colleague and partner, Dr. Lynn Bell. Lynn is very interested in all of the uh, skeletal material. So when she started to see some of the earlier work that I'd done in Saanich Inlet, she said, well, do you still have the bones? I said, well, yeah, we still have some of the bones. So she's now working on those older carcasses and joined us in 2012 with the Canadian Police Research Center funding. And now we're looking at putting two pigs down at a time. First of all, in the Strait of Georgia, now in the Saanich Inlet, just recovered. And we'll be putting two more down in the Saanich Inlet uh, today, hopefully. And in each of the cases, I'm watching the carcasses underwater with cameras. We're monitoring all of the different chemical uh, changes in the water. And then we're recovering the bones, as we just did today. And then Lynn can take them back into the lab. And Lynn will process them and examine them in, um, in her laboratory to de determine more features about the, the microskeletal structures and changes that have happened. Nobody's ever been able to do this. I mean, the opportunity to do this with Venus is, is phenomenal. So we've never been able to see what happens to a body in water under these conditions, nor to see what happens to the skeleton. One of the main things I want to see is whether or not we can estimate an elapsed time since death, how long that that carcass has been in the water, be it from the animals and the scavenging or from Lynn's work with the skeleton. So we want to be able to see whether or not we can work out how long the body has been in there, uh, what kind of waters it's been in. Has it been in a high oxygen area or a low oxygen area? What kind of scavengers might have been uh, feeding on it? And then we can interpret that when we look at a human homicide and look at whether or not these marks were caused by animals, whether or not this body is possible to have been in the water for three days or three months, um, and also look at whether or not um, certain marks or, or artifacts on the body are caused by an animal, just a shrimp, or is that something that maybe the killer did?